Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the AI Quality Conference so far. So for the purposes of this talk, uh, my talk will be on the importance of data quality for advanced RAG. Uh, I'm Jerry, co-founder and CEO of Llama Index. For those of you who don't know, Llama Index is a data framework and platform for helping you build uh, LLM applications of your data, like RAG, agents, and a lot more stuff. Uh, we have some exciting releases this week. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, they're not in the slides, but just, yeah, keep, keep your eyes out. Great. So most of you probably know what RAG is. Um, that's probably why you're here. Uh, there's two main components to RAG. There's data parsing and ingestion, as well as uh, data querying, like the retrieval LLM prompting piece. And I think you know many of you, if you're just starting off building RAG, probably have built something of the following form. You know, you, you do some like naive like parsing using an open source parser. You do some like naive splitting. You just like split your pages down the middle every few sentences or so, every paragraph. You do like top K dense retrieval, and then you stuff it all into a prompt, right? So if you've built RAG systems, this pattern should seem relatively familiar to you. Um, and I think one of the main challenges with this overall approach right, is that it doesn't really work all the time. If you've built this, it's very easy to prototype. You can build a prototype in about like five minutes to like 10 minutes you know, if you're experienced with Python and follow one of our quick start tutorials. But we've talked a lot about this. There's a lot of steps you need to take to ensure that you're actually able to get to production and meet the quality bar necessary in order to build something that can actually respond well given any question that you want to ask. So for a lot of RAG, naive RAG approaches tend to work well for relatively simple questions over a simple small set of documents. If you have you know, like five PDFs and you want to ask a question about a specific fact in one of those PDFs, Naive RAG generally works pretty well. You know, embeddings are decent these days. They'll be able to surface the right chunk for you. And then LLMs can generally synthesize the right answer given the chunk in the context. However, productionizing RAG over more questions and a larger set of data is a lot more challenging. Some of the failure modes that we see uh, talking to a lot of developers within the enterprise include the following failure modes. This includes uh, like simple questions over complex data. So even if your question is still simple, if the data itself is complicated, you, know, you might not be able to surface the right answer all the time. It might be hallucinating an answer for you. And we'll define what complex data means in just a bit. Another failure mode is simple questions over you know, multiple documents. Let's say you're not just asking a question over one PDF, but you're asking a question over like 10 or 100 or even a million. right? And the third one is just not being able to actually answer like more vague, complex, multi-part questions. Like RAG systems tend to work well for relatively targeted questions, but the moment you try to ask something a little bit more complex, it tends to you know, uh, break a little bit. So the top priority goal should be trying to figure out how to get like high response quality from the set of representative questions that you want to ask. And you know, we've talked about this a little bit, but there's generally two main focus areas for improving your RAG systems. One is improving data quality, which is going to be the focus of this talk. And then the other is this whole separate thread about agents. I'm sure many of you are probably hearing a lot about agents uh, throughout the course of today, as well as you know, generally on the internet. Um, and we have talked about this as well, but I only have like you know, 10 minutes left. So we're going to talk about data quality. Let's focus on improving data quality. And this part's actually pretty underrated, right? Because data quality is one of those things that if you're a machine learning engineer, everybody understands the importance of data pre-processing, feature engineering, so on and so forth. But the thing about LLMs is that it's so easy to get started by just like stuffing in a bunch of text that oftentimes like, you might let these considerations slip and this can introduce a barrier to you actually getting a production with your RAG system. One of the first principles that I think we believe in is basically this idea of you know, garbage in, garbage out. It's a principle that's true in ML, and it's also a principle that's true in the case of LLM app development. Good data quality is a necessary component of any production LLM app. And the thing is, you know, if you don't have the right data processing layer, just very generically, you're not going to get clean data. And then if you don't have clean data, LLMs are going to have a hard time like, figuring out how to actually give you back good response quality, even for very powerful LLMs today. Some of the main components of data processing include the following. Uh, there's parsing, you know, there's chunking, and there's indexing. We'll talk about each of these components in, in just a bit. 
But first, you know, one common use case we see over and over again within the enterprise is this idea of like a complex document. A lot of documents can be classified as, uh, you know, complex. So basically, instead of just having a paragraph of text, it might have a lot of other elements in it. It might have like embedded tables. Uh, it might be a PowerPoint presentation with like different spatial layouts. It might have charts either in the form of like actual like you know SVG shapes or in the form of like a you know rasterized image. Um, there might be like headers and footers that you might want to inject as metadata. And so oftentimes we see that naive RAG indexing pipelines fail over these documents. You're just not able to get back uh, when you like just you know do the naive like slicing and all this stuff. You get back a, a whole bunch of hallucinations when you ask a question over, for instance, like a table or a chart or an image. One of the main reasons this is the case is just bad parsing. Um, if you have a bad PDF parser, you're going to have like a relatively uh, underperforming uh, RAG pipeline. So if you use like PyPDF, for instance, to parse this like table image right here, which is a table extracted from a financial report of a large bank, you, real, you notice that a lot of the text and numbers are extracted into this format. It tends to be you know, relatively messy. Uh, all the numbers and text are blended together. And we find that when you ask questions over this text that's badly parsed, um, even for like GPT-40, even for Opus, uh, you're not able to um, oftentimes it hallucinates the answer, right? If you ask a question over a specific value in some of these tables. So one of the things that we built at Llama Index is Llama Parse, which is a special document parser uh, designed to let you build RAG over complex docs. Um, of course, there's other players working on this problem as well, right? And I think all, all like the, the overall motivation of a lot of these projects is to really, you know, take in unstructured data that can be very complex and somehow structure it in the right way so that LLMs can understand it. So some of the core capabilities of Llama Parse include being able to properly extract out and format tables and charts, input natural language parsing instructions, extract out images so you can build multimodal RAG, and also support a bunch of different document types that are common today. You know, PDFs, PowerPoints, DocX files, HTML, and more. One of the, like taking a step back, one of the core ideas is actually pretty interesting. Parsing itself can improve performance by quite a bit. So even without advanced indexing and retrieval, if you're still just doing the dumb thing about like, you know, uh, chunking like every number of sentences and then doing like top K dense retrieval without any sort of hybrid search, uh, or like BM25, good parsing itself helps to reduce hallucinations by a lot. So what we did was we took the you know Caltrain schedule, um, like the weekend schedule, and we ran it through, for instance, for Llama Parse, and we get back like a well spatially laid out um, kind of uh, text representation of this schedule. It turns out models like OpenAI and uh, Anthropic and and some of the like state of the art LLMs out there. They understand text formatting pretty well. So when things are well spaced and well aligned, they can actually answer questions over this text uh, a lot better than if that text was not formatted well. So this is just an example with PyPDF, and then this is an example with Llama Parse. If you ask a question by feeding in this you know, formatted text and over a specific train, um, you realize you get back like the right times for this specific train using Llama Parse, this text representation right here. And you're not able to get back the right response um, if you use a naive parser that messes up the formatting of the table. What's interesting is that you can combine you know, advanced parsing, but also with advanced indexing and retrieval. And so this is basically talking about um, you know, steps towards a slightly more sophisticated pipeline than pure flat like chunking and indexing. So what we talk about here is this overall idea of hierarchical indexing and retrieval to model heterogeneous uh, you know, different types of data within a document, whether it's unstructured text, tabular, or multimodal. So an example shown here is really this diagram. A PDF can be broken down into a bunch of text chunks, images, tables, and a generally good pipeline looks something like the following. You parse the documents into a set of like multimodal elements, so text chunks, tables, images, and more. And then for each one of these elements, you extract one or more text representations that can be indexed. Um, and so for a table or an image, you can extract out like a summary or for instance, like multiple summaries of this, uh, multiple descriptions of this element. 
And what you want to do is you embed and index the summaries, the text representations that link to the underlying object, right? So for tables, you might extract like summaries or table cells as a thing that you actually feed to your embedding model. What you end up with, the thing that you store in a vector database is this stuff right here. But all this stuff links to the underlying entity. And during retrieval, you want to do some sort of like two-step retrieval approach. We call this like recursive retrieval because you basically just follow the links along the document graph and continue retrieving until you, you know, get all the context. But retrieve the indexed bits, like the summaries and the sentences, and then you fetch the source elements, whether it's the raw document text or the table or the image. And so this two-step uh, retrieval approach oftentimes works a lot better by helping you, you know, have different representations of the same element. So depending on the question that you want to ask, it'll be able to surface the relevant item uh, compared to like flat indexing and naive retrieval. Uh, an example shown here is just a pipeline that we built over an annual report, like a financial document. And you're able to get back answers without hallucinations when you ask about like certain you know, um, information about cash flows for Netflix, for instance, within this table. Uh, whereas a naive pipeline gives you back the wrong response. So you know, that's one of the core ideas. Um, and then the second idea here is besides parsing, of course, there's also just like general chunking and indexing tips that over the course of the past year, people have thought about, uh, come up with, and, and basically kind of promoted as good, generally best practices for anyone building a RAG pipeline. The first, and, and this is something that we found, is that like page level chunking is oftentimes a strong baseline for your documents. So if you have like a bunch of PDFs or PowerPoints, you know, generally speaking, all the information that you um, need, a lot of information that you need is gonna be contained within that single page. Obviously there's exceptions, a section can span like multiple pages, you might have to de devise like clever ways of injecting metadata filters uh, or metadata so they can filter for it later. But generally speaking, instead of worrying about the specific chunk size, if you just chunk at the level of pages, uh, you're gonna be able to get decent results. A an advanced approach, like once you know, uh, long context models uh, take off uh, and, and they're, like, the, the cost and latency uh, go down even further, uh, one thing that we're very interested in is this idea of like just document level chunking, um, which will further reduce the need to really worry about very fine grained chunking parameters like chunk size, when you can just like stuff entire documents into, um, into the LLM prompt window. Some other uh, tips here include trying to preserve like semantically similar content for chunking. This is related to the overall, the, the way that like Llama parse, for instance, parses complex documents. But generally speaking, you know, don't break tables, don't break like kind of text in the middle of a, a section, and try to keep things like relatively semantically coherent. And of course, metadata extraction is one of those like uh, underrated things that directly uh, ties into this overall approach right here. Extracting a healthy dose of metadata, or even different types of metadata, gives you back a semi-structured way of representing your text that you can then query from across a variety of different dimensions, whether it's like vector search or even something like SQL. On the indexing side, all this stuff is related, which is, you know, not only do you uh, get back like a parse like document graph, you also want to make sure that the way you, the thing that you index is like the different representations of the same underlying object. And so oftentimes, like indexing a text chunk with a single vector is not enough, right? Um, you might extract different representations, whether it's like a summary, a sentence of the same underlying piece of text, and you want to be able to represent that with multiple different vectors so that during retrieval, you can you know, retrieve the underlying source object and dedupe as necessary to basically uh, give you back the underlying uh, data. Some other indexing tips here include uh, actually having a doc store. Uh, oftentimes people just think, oh, we only need like a vector database when building RAG. Uh, you really need like a key value store so you can store different types of like hierarchical information uh, and also your source documents. You also need a doc store to basically help you do caching or incremental syncing. If you, know, you have a lot of data and you only want to propagate changes when that data updates, you want to be able to make sure that you know, you're able to just sync the stuff that has changed. And so a doc store can help you store the hashes of the documents to ensure, uh, to basically double check like, which documents have changed and which haven't. Finally, um, you need, uh, like, basically a lot of people are building chatbots and agents these days. And having some sort of storage system to store conversation history and more generically, longer term memory is a necessary component. 
Um, and we're going to anticipate that this is going to become like an increasing thing. You know, you're not only just want, going to want to retrieve, you know, flat document chunks, but also return the conversation history in some sort of wall represented way, potentially with uh, knowledge graphs. In the last like 30 seconds or so, I think there's some interesting, there's still some very interesting challenges of data processing for LLMs. And I encourage all of us to basically think about this even as we build more advanced stuff on the query orchestration side. Um, data quality does matter quite a bit. You know, parsing, chunking, indexing, all impacts the capabilities of your end-to-end -end, you know, QA interface knowledge assistant. But some of the main things that we're still thinking about include uh, the impact of multimodality. As multimodal models get better, faster, cheaper, uh, you might be like it'd be interesting to think about the native chunk representation of a document being an uh, image of that page as opposed to a text representation, which will inherently allow you to capture stuff like diagrams and, and images. The impact of long context windows. Many people have wondered whether you know RAG is dead uh, with long context LLMs, and you know, generally speaking, we think the, that retrieval of RAG will stay, especially over larger document corpuses. But we think that you know the minute chunking decisions of like chunk size within a page will probably go away. The third interesting thing to think about is a lot of people are talking about vector databases, but what we generally need is probably like a more unified storage system that can not only search by vectors, but a lot of different types of query interfaces, whether it's SQL, whether it's knowledge graphs, and unify unstructured, structured, multimodal data, especially as models become more multimodal themselves. So interesting things to think about. And again, we have some cool releases coming up this week, so stay tuned. Thank you.